Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary, and I've got in the studio, once again, Mark Spencer. Hey. How are you, Mark? Good. Good. You know, we were talking before the show, and one of my questions to you was, I go and I see things online, go see a, a YouTube video or something, and someone's done you know, a really cool effect, and I want to reverse engineer that. And you said, I've got something to show you. Yeah. And you brought absolutely, it in. Okay. Absolutely. So that, and that's pretty frequent. You want, you see something that's done and it's a us- unique effect. How can I do something like that? People ask that all the time. And this is also an opportunity for me to promote some of the work of some other motion artists out there mm-hmm. who are doing some interesting things because the, uh, uh, I, I didn't figure this out. Somebody else did and I'm showing it and I'll tell you a little bit of that in a minute. But here, here's what we have. We have this video that's been making the rounds from, uh, OK Go and I'll just play a little bit of it. I'm not going to play the audio because it's, um, not necessarily PG rated. Okay. Uh, so, but you can just see there's this kind of streaking, psychedelic, copied, streaming thing going on that's, right. uh, that's pretty cool. And part of the reason it's cool is actually they've made very good use of it and the way they've combined it with masking and, and the types of things they do in here. So the effect itself is actually quite easy to do. Uh, once you know how to set it up. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to show you the basics of it. And then what they've done is some additional masking. So you can still see that guy in front and things like that to make it work out. I'll show you the basic way to do this in, uh, in motion. So, uh, and credit for this goes to a person only known as special case, special case. Okay. And you know who you are. Yeah, this is somebody on the, the, the motion forum on the Apple website who's very, very helpful and often puts in some good tips. And he did this great tip. And I thought, oh, this has got to get out to a wider audience. Okay. So this is really, um, he described how to do this. And I just thought it was fantastic. So I'm going to start. I've got a piece of footage here and I'll play it. It's this soccer player jumping for a ball. Is that key? And, like pre, or Yeah. So, so it is pre-keyed footage. And in fact, if I hit shift T to show transparency, you'll see that there is a right. transparent background, right? So I'll turn that back off. I just need to see that that's what's going on. In fact, where this comes from, uh, this is a product called Crowd Control. And I'll just give a quick uh, shout out to Crowd Control here. It's from All Bets Are Off Productions, uh, Haran Rabinowitz, okay. which is a great, he's a huge After Effects instructor. Does a lot of great stuff with After Effects uh, and sells all this pre key footage of people doing things. You can see some of this stuff here. So Crowd Control, okay. uh, a really interesting product here, which you can use in After Effects or you can use in Motion. It doesn't matter. So we're using it here in Motion. H- high def, mostly high oh, def. Yeah, oh yeah, this in fact, if we do uh, Command J for a product pro- project properties, you can see this is a 1280 by 720 project. Nice. And in fact, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm glad you said that, I'm actually going to reduce the quality and resolution a little bit because we're going to make particles. And once we have many copies of this high def right. thing with an alpha channel, oh, the other thing I did, I converted it to ProRes 4x4. Okay. It was uh, animation, but this is a little more friendly codec. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring the render quality down to half. And I'm going to bring the uh, quality quality, I should say. Uh, there's the resolution and there's the quality I'm going to bring to... Uh, draft and it'll just help us out a little bit here for so performance while we're working just for performance yeah. so yeah. we can see what happens yeah so i'm gonna first thing i'm gonna do i'm just gonna hit make particles okay so we made particles if i hit play now you'll see uh it just kind of goes crazy because it's making uh copies in fact 30 copies a second mm-hmm. of this this uh image so it looks kind of cool in its own right right, right. there right it's so a little random it's, it's a little random yeah so what I'm going to do now is tweak it just a little bit. It doesn't take too much tweaking. So I'm going to go to the inspector, to the emitter tab. And down at the bottom, I don't want to play frames. So I'm going to turn off play frames. And it'll take a little second to update here because it's dealing with this high def footage. But there it goes. So it's not playing frames, uh, but it's still creating random frames. So you still get this sort of look of all these copies of this guy everywhere. So I'm going to bring the playhead back to the beginning again. And the next thing I'm going to do after turning off play frames, I'm going to turn off random start frame. Okay. Okay. So now I've just got this guy right at the beginning. Okay. And th- there's speed involved because those particles are moving. That's why he's kind of spreading out like that, like the Hulk or something. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the speed. And I'm going to set the speed to zero. So I actually don't want him to move out of there at all. So now nothing's happening. And the key is here. What we want to do is keyframe the source value. So if I scroll down, here's the source start frame. So on frame one, on the beginning of this animation, I'm just going to set a keyframe. I'm going to option click on the animation menu. Right. And then I'll go to say frame, I'll just scrub forward in time here, not quite so far. 
maybe I'll just put the playhead about 84, okay. frame 84. I'll set another keyframe, option clicking, and I'll set the value 84 there. What that means is every frame that you advance, it'll play the next frame of the video. Right. But it'll leave the old frame of the video. Uh, so now... Ah, uh, see, now we're starting to look like yeah, the video. Yeah, so now if I play from the beginning here, and it'll take it a minute, because again, this is HD, and it's got, a, it's got to do a lot of stuff here. Uh, but it'll start playing from the beginning, and you'll get a little bit more of that streaking kind of effect. So there he is, and he's waiting for the ball, and starts to move, and you can see all the copies left behind. Right. And that's that's really it. That's the basic process for setting up that uh, that kind of look, is, is to have some key footage, sure. make an emitter out of it with zero speed, and turn off play frames, and just keyframe that source frame over time. And you can take it further, you can put a background in there and, sure. and do kinds of interesting things to add to it, even put it in 3D if you want to, and uh, create more interesting looks. But that's the basic idea right there is how to set it up. You're kind of leaving breadcrumbs, visual breadcrumbs behind. It's like a, a trail. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And you can spread them out in 3D space and add all kinds of backgrounds and, and just go crazy and start to add masks as well. But that's the fundamental part of the concept. So, um, and actually, uh, you know, that the Apple Motion Forum is a good support forum for asking questions. That's on the Apple site under discussions okay. for motion. Uh, you also have a website that uh, I do. does a lot of discussion, obviously, on motion. Right. And that is? Uh, AppleMotion.net is uh, all motion all the time. Uh, everything motion that you can find on the internet, I've got there in some place, as long as it's decent quality. Sure. And uh, I, I do my, you know, my motion for training uh, from Ripple, RippleTraining.com. And you've now added a, a blog, so you're actually actively blogging about this. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, which I've been doing for a while. I've had that website up for five years, and I try to keep it current with you know what's going on in the motion world. And what's your yeah. Twitter account, too? Uh, Mark Spen. Just okay. Mark Spen. I, I, I bring that up because I really enjoy, I follow you on Twitter, and you, you come up with these, like that OK Go. I actually saw it because you posted uh, okay. it there. And, but you'll post, hey, saw this really cool thing, or this person's doing something cool. I never would have found right, it otherwise. Right. And actually, try it, Twitter's interesting. I try to keep it business focused. Sure. So I don't talk too much about, hey, I just had a peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> you know, I'd, it's a little bit more, it's pretty much motion focused or cinema 4D or motion graphics type of things. Always a pleasure having you in. All right. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary.